Good morning and welcome to this week's prayer during the day for Sunday the 13th of September. Our services in church are at 10 o'clock on a Sunday for a common worship service, no singing, and at 10 o'clock on a Wednesday where we're doing a BCP service and we never sing there. These online services will continue. The theme in our Sunday services between now and Christmas is discipleship. And today we have readings that are about forgiveness. Let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. And some words of praise from the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. So our first reading is from the book of Genesis and it's right at the end of the story of Joseph and his brothers. You may be more familiar with it um, as Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, but this is right at the end of the story. Realising that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of God to your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you had intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way he reassured them, speaking kindly of to them. So Joseph had a lot to forgive. His brothers had, through jealousy, wanted to kill him. And it was only when they, had, they saw the opportunity to sell him into slavery that they didn't. And they then went back to the father, their father, telling him that Joseph was dead. And so the father, Jacob, lived for many, many years. Um, if we watch the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, it all happens in an evening. But actually, it was decades. He spent a long, long time believing that his only son, his beloved youngest son, of his beloved wife was dead. And then he had to deal with the fact that his other sons had tried to kill him. So a lot to forgive here. And I wonder how we feel about forgiveness. Not for the, just the little things, but the, the deep hurt and pain. And so the next reading is also about forgiveness. So as I read it, what comes up for you? This is a complex subject and the feelings can go very deep. So this is the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 18. Then Peter came along and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times. Jesus said to him, no, se not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven 
may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. And when he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with you and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of the slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then the fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused and went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported their lord to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said, you wicked slave. I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you have not had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, the Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay the entire debt. So my heavenly father will do also to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So, it's a hard reading. Let's just reflect a moment in silence. So we pray about forgiveness. We pray for those situations in which we have been hurt, in which we have been wounded. Perhaps we have experienced a wound so deep that our sense of self has been shattered. We pray for the grace to start the healing process of forgiving the other. We pray for the strength. We pray for the space. We, spray, we pray for the time to begin or to continue the process of forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the emotions that are brought up in matters of forgiveness. We pray For the healing of anger and depression that comes from hurt. We pray for the space and the time and for good people to come alongside us as we work through hurt and woundedness. We pray for the courage to ask for help when we get stuck. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for wisdom, for that place of knowing when we need to stop asking why or how and concentrate on ourselves and our own healing. For those who have been wronged, 
We pray for the courage to walk away from the need for an apology, for a recognition of the hurt done. We pray for the courage to be able to hand what cannot, what cannot be to you, our loving Father. We give you thanks when apologies are given and restitution is made. But understanding that we can only pray for our own healing and our own capacity to forgive. We pray for the courage to let go what needs to be let go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who will be at hospital appointments this week. We pray for those who will die, for those who watch and wait with them. We pray for those organising funerals. And we pray for all of those who are mourning the loss of a loved one where the funeral wasn't as they hoped. Lord, be with those who grieve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves as new regulations come in and we deal with the uncertainty of what we can, of what we can't do, of plans turned upside down. We pray especially for children and teachers in schools and for young people going off to university, navigating ever-changing rules and regulations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we bring our prayers to an end by praying the Lord's Prayer together, in whichever version or language you feel most comfortable. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And so our blessing continues to be for wisdom. It's a time when we seem to need an awful lot of wisdom, um, both individually and corporately. Come wisdom, breath of God's power, bringer of goodness of, and love. Come wisdom, stream of God's glory, sharer of justice and truth. Come wisdom, light of God's treasure, gifter of friendship and joy. Come wisdom, meet us where we are. Keep watch over our lives. So may Christ our Redeemer bring us healing and wholeness. Amen. So have a blessed week. God bless.